Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Bernatas, the Director of Instrumental School Methods and Repertoire for Alfred Music. And I'm so excited to be here with one of our incredible percussion authors, Pete Magadini, who's joining us for a fun interview today of five questions with Pete Magadini. Pete has been a professional drummer since age 16. His drumming credits include playing alongside artists such as Diana Ross, George Duke, Bobby Gentry, Chet Baker, the Dot Don Ellis Band, Al Jarreau, and the John Handy Quintet, and many, many more. Pretty amazing when I actually looked at who you've played with, and I've, my mind is blown. So welcome, and thanks for joining us today, Pete. So polyrhythms. I taught this as a teacher, and the concept is, is really amazing. And to see the level that you've developed your performance with it and teaching with it is just mind blowing. So for those who don't know, can you tell us what has driven you to focus on the performance and perfection of polyrhythms? Well, uh, in the 60s, I was at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. And in 1965, or 66, uh, Ali Akbar Khan came to school uh, at uh, UC Berkeley. And uh, I attended the course. And his uh, tabla master was Mahapurush Misra. And there was about 40 of us that started the class. There was four that ended the class. It was an eight-week course every day. And he allowed me to stay afterwards because there's no way I was going to play tabla and be able to stay afterwards. He let me stay afterwards with my drum pad. And we exchanged drum uh, improvisations. And he taught me about time ratios. And time ratios is how you identify polyrhythms. Three over four quarter note triplets is one and a half times faster than the four. So it's one and a half to one, very common polyrhythm. And they go three, four, five, six, seven, eight over the four. Those are the basic polyrhythms. Then you subdivide those polyrhythms into quarters, eights, triplets, and sixteenths. Except in Indian music, they don't have quarters, eights, triplets, and sixteenths. It's all syllables. So what I did when I saw how time ratios worked, I applied our system of reading one-to-one -one rhythms four, four time, quarters, eights, triplets, and sixteenths. And I applied that to the polyrhythm ratios and there you have the concept. It's amazing to think uh, about the mathematical aspect of it. So it does make me think of a question if you were interested in mathematics or if you were interested in music or if those are two things that melded together for you. But really my question is, and you can, you can answer that question along with this. When I watch your performances of it and I listen to the explanations about how these work, as mathematical as it is, it doesn't sound mathematical. It sounds, it's a very natural feel as when I'm hearing it. So that's my question. Is it, do you think about it mathematic, mathematically when you're performing or is a polyrhythmic performance based on feel as well? Well, that's an excellent question. So many people say, uh, not so many people, but uh, I hear some experts in drumming say, I don't study polyrhythms because I can't dance to them. Well, that is a ridiculous answer. Yeah. We don't study rhythm by starting out dancing to quarters, eighths, triplets, and sixteenths. We learn those first, and then we apply our own feeling to those things. And if you want to dance to them, you can. Africans dance to polyrhythms very, very well and have been doing it for a long time. So are the Indians. However, there's classical composers who write out polyrhythmic compositions just using the math. It's the very same thing as our system. It's just we have another layer, that's all. And that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like the way that you think about music theory, at least I think about music theory. You learn the concepts, but then when you're creating, you kind of almost want to forget the concepts and you, you rely exactly. on your understanding. Exactly right. Good, 
that's a good analogy. That's awesome. All right, here's my next question for you, which is what advice do you have for a student that wants to learn how to play polyrhythmically without getting confused? Oh, that's easy. I have two books. <laughs> this is my Alfred book, Polyrhythms for the Drum Set. This is one specifically for drummers. This is another book. It's the first one. It's called Polyrhythms, the Musician's Guide. And if you start in the beginning, you have triplets, and then you have the triplets broken down into quarter note triplets, three over four, and then those same principles, it starts to subdivide them and it works through all those ratios. This is the math part of it, but like you said, you have to get that together in music theory before you can apply it to your compositions. This book, my Alfred book, I think is probably my most demanding book. But again, if you start at the beginning, because this is at the set. Yeah. And it has to do with playing in polyrhythms at the same time. So your feet and your hand, uh, your, your hi-hat and your bass drum is in 4-4, four, four, let's say. And then your right cymbal is in 6. And then your left hand is either playing quarters, eights, and triplets and sixteenths with the four four, with the six going on by itself, or the six is going on, and this is playing quarters, eights, triplets, and sixteenths with the six while the feet are keeping the four four. And what happens is it gives you tremendous physical independence and also now mental independence. And that's what polyrhythms do as well. Our brains are locked into monaural. If you want to separate them into stereo and let the frontal lobes have some freedom, you study polyrhythms. I think that's what made me think of that question is when you look at it as a finished product, it's very, it's very confusing to make everything connect together. But the way you're explaining it, breaking it down back at the triple, and how does this one, how do you work the independence and understanding of this? Then you're adding another layer, and then those layers build on top of each other. But it's building strength in those individual layers first. Um, so seeing that process, I think, is what makes it more tangible. And then, like you're saying, ultimately, you can express by using what you've learned. Uh, exactly. So, so basically, for a beginner, start at the beginner beginning. Yes, because you know how many times I've seen people, I've, I've handed them the book. By the way, I have a lot of really top drummers and percussionists who've gone through this and endorsed it uh, and take their word for it. I mean, I have a lot of their names and the endorsements on the front and sure. the back. But don't start like this. Here's what I see. They go, they start in the back and they go, Oh, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, it got hard. You got there one page at a time. All you have to do is start in the front. That's right. Well, that's you know, a, that, it's a good, it's good advice. And I know that just from experience, the beginning parts of the book take a long time to write. So it's, up, it's upsetting when people flip past it and go to the middle. Yes, right. <laughs> All right. And how about please, a, One more thing. Sure. If you're interested in polyrhythms and you're seeing this video, please don't go to the internet and download it for free. You know, any, any books. I mean, we have, like yourself, serious musicians working really hard to bring this to you. You're not going to spend $20 for a book. You're going to go rob us, you know, and, and download it for free. Yeah. Nobody, nobody benefits from that. Pretty soon you won't have books. We'll just have the uh, the guys on the internet. True, and it's good to be able to have your own tangible copy to make notes in and, and to have. Absolutely. So, and they're not that. And if, anyway, and if you and if you buy one of my books, if you send it to me, I'll autograph it for you and I'll mail it back to you. There you go. Added bonus. That's awesome. Added bonus. 
All right, let me go on to number four. And this is a, a fun one and probably a challenging one, uh, even though it's a simple question. What is your favorite song? Any artist, any year? Well, you know, I, 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 I've played with a lot of artists and uh, it depends what kind of mood I'm in or what might be my favorite song or, you know, um, uh, artists, well, you know, there are some really wonderful drummers. I, I, I admire so many of them. Uh, I have to say, if there was one I listened to more than any other in the period of my career, uh, uh, would be uh, Elvin Jones, the drummer with John Coltrane in the beginning. Uh, and also, uh, throughout his career, uh, I, I followed him and heard him in person many times. But I also like John Bonham. I like the, uh, the Frank Zappa drummers. You know, there's a guy who wrote in polyrhythms before anybody else was doing it. Short, short story. George Duke came to town with Frank Zappa. I had played a long time with George Duke. Got to meet Frank Zappa uh, at a rehearsal. And I said, uh, Frank, I said, uh, you know, I wrote a book on polyrhythms and I sent you one. I wonder if you got it. I thought you might give me an endorsement. He said, oh, I already had it and walk <laughs> up. <laughs> that's I guess that's some story. sort of endorsement. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow, that's very cool. And I do love how artists influence other artists. And it's it's a, it's not so much competition, it's a support of each other and, and their influence in everyone's style. It's just such an inspirational field to be in. So I, I love that you're, you're naming many different influences and you appreciate what they've done. And I have to say, I have to say one thing before this is over. You mentioned that you were a band director for all those years. I, if it wasn't for school band directors, we would not be having this interview. I'll tell you that. That's... Because I was a school musician all the way through high school. I hadn't taken one private lesson until I got out of high school. And it was my band director giving me a little scholarship to study with uh, Don Bothwell in Phoenix, Arizona that uh, turned my life around. Wow. So I owed, I owed all, all to the band directors. At the same here. The, uh, band was one of those places when I, I actually quit as a freshman in high school and I rejoined as a junior where when I realized that all my friends were in band. Exactly. It's just one of those things that it just brings us together and it's, it, our teachers are great influencers in our lives. So it's great to be part of that community as well. So th thanks, for, thanks for bringing us on that road. And now our final question, the most important question of all, because I am in the New York area in New Jersey and you're in the Chicago area. So if you have to choose your style of pizza when you're eating pizza, you can tell me that too, why you're not eating pizza. If you had to pick, is it deep dish or is it New York style? I have to say, and on, in all my Italian honesty, you can't beat New York pizza. I have to agree. In fact, that's what we're having for dinner tonight. <laughs> okay. Good enough. All on. right. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today for our five questions. It's been a real pleasure talking with you and meeting with you. And I, it's really great. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And thanks again for joining us, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody at Alfred. I really appreciate it. You got it. Till next time. Thanks again.